Some of you, Shadow Fight 2 enjoyers, might say Shadow is obviously stronger than his son, Dad is after all a dad. Whilst others could insist that Shadow is no match for the descendant. Both of you, will find a lot of interesting information. Which descendant by the way, you might ask. Both descendants in fact, we'll compare Shadow to Proximus and Stranger, his sons. Let's start with Shadow. How strong was Shadow in his prime? This question is much harder to answer than you might think at first. First of all, when was his prime? At what time period he was considered the strongest? Before you comment down below saying Shadow's prime is when he defeated Titan or Tenebris, let's not forget a very important detail that many of you miss out. When we talk about normal people, like Sensei or Sly, we have an idea in mind that they reach the strongest version of themselves at some point in life and then they age and gradually lose a lot of their power. This can be said about Sensei. In his prime, he was able to defeat six demons and a haunted prince with a sphere. Basically, the strongest guy in the world. But as he started aging, he became so weak. He could barely break a brick if he wanted to. Shadow on the other hand has a different story. The tricky thing about him is that he doesn't age. For those who haven't played Shadow Fight 3 or didn't pay much attention to the plot, watch this video to find out why Shadow is immortal and doesn't age. The link is in the description or you can press here to watch. Some people tell in my comments saying developers nerfed Shadow so much, that it's beyond sad. But you guys don't know what Shadow is capable of really in Shadow Fight 3. After the end of Shadow Fight 2, he in fact didn't just stay there doing nothing. Even after defeating underground bosses and Titan, he still trained hard. In Shadow Fight 3, we can see that there are three faction and each of them has their own unique fighting style and weapons. Shadow meanwhile, can utilize techniques and use weapons from all these three factions. Well, there is another character who mastered the fighting style of three faction after a decade of hard training, Shang Su. However, Shadow didn't just learn these techniques. He in fact combined what he know and created his own style. His new fighting style is so overpowered, once you get hit by a single hit from him. You can't get out of it until he finishes series of attacks that include numerous hits. The only way is to not get hit by him and be extremely cautious. In Shadow Fight 2 he was nowhere close to this level of experience and skill. What he also gained is a significant boost in intelligence. He now built his own large robot with insane mechanics. Not every engineer or scientist could do that. He also has a shield, similar to Titan's, however it's much better. If Titan's shield would go away with any hit, Shadow's shield needs to go down first after several hits, then you can damage his actual health. When Shadow needs to create the accelerator no matter what it takes, he returns to the Legion, and guess what he does? All the power in the Legion goes immediately into his hands. Elders, officers, Queen Yolanda and everyone else who dared to stand in his way are stomped in a matter of a single day. Have you ever seen someone who comes alone out of nowhere and in just one day takes rule of the entire country? If you haven't, now you know. If before his arrival, Legion had trouble with the dynasty and the heralds, after Shadow arrives, he alone wipes out two factions completely. Imagine three superpowers coexisting and suddenly one of them has a new ruler. And this ruler single-handedly destroys the other two superpowers, like they're nothing. This is the power of mighty Shadow. He stomped every herald scientist, who stood on his way. None of them could trap him in a time loop, nor could any shady tricks from the dynasty do anything to the legendary warrior. The map of the world, when Shadow comes to the Legion, is terrifying. There are no borders on this map, only one place exists, and that place is the Legion. If that's not enough, there's more. It's implied that not only humans, but ancients also tried to stop Shadow. And Void Children as well. Mighty protagonist of the previous game was so powerful, nobody could come even close to his level of strength. Shadow beasts were feared, as they spread scourge. A deadly sickness. Shadow just clapped them, like they were mere rookies. Keep in mind, that almost everyone who he has fought, he didn't wear any armor at all, nor did he have a helmet. Or even a weapon. That is simply insane. Another way to measure his strength is his ability to control Shadow Mind. Only the strongest can control it, others just go insane when they fuse with it. Shadow remains conscious and well in the state of fusion. His power is noted by Stranger and Bolo. The first one says that Shadow has the highest index of importance to history, his will is reality. As nothing can stop him. Bolo goes back in time many times to prevent Shadow getting the accelerator, but no matter what he does, Shadow stomps everybody and still gets what he wants. You know what else could Shadow have done? He could have easily completed the game I developed, had he known about it. 
Your support for the games I develop and feedback makes it possible to make these videos. Donating a would also help me significantly, you can do both, following the links in the description. Now you might be thinking, if Shadow is this overpowered and invincible, why would people even say he became weaker in Shadow Fight 3? Well, the reason is because he lost to Proximus. It's important to note, that until his own descendant appeared, it was unthinkable that Shadow could be defeated in any way. The only person who did it is related to him by blood and has half of his DNA. A lot of you who think that Shadow's son is fodder, will rethink their opinion after watching this part of the video. Proximus was destined to reach unimaginable heights even before he was born. The genetics were on his side. His dad is the strongest warrior the history has ever seen before. His mother is an expert in equipment and a genius. Mei was once under Titan's control and back then she partly got insane amount of power from Titan. Significant part of which remained even after Shadow freed her. Mei was able to clap Lynx, like he was a kitten in the Gates's plane of Shadow Fight 3. During the event of the Women's Day of the same game, we can see that Mei is regarded as one of the strongest. If not the strongest woman in the world of Shadow Fight 3, who inspired many warriors and influential people. So, when two parents with the best genes you can imagine a child can have. Decide to make a baby, this baby will be the most talented and the most gifted individual. Before you tell me, that hard work can beat talent, you have to understand that Proximus also worked hard. He was very persistent and stubborn, he never gave up on his goals, in this manner he resembles his dad a lot. Proximus's journey is insanely long and tough, he never thought about quitting. He became an orphan soon after his birth, he grew up amid war and the dark period of the Legion. To create peace, Shadow's descendant had to abandon the Legion. The very same faction he used to call his motherland, the people who he called family, he had to betray the person, whom he almost considered his father. Keep in mind, that he did it all when he was very young. He trained hard since the very beginning of his life, got used to overcoming challenges, going through tragic events and always was kind, caring for people. If you think Proximus resembles someone a lot, comment who is it? At the age, when Shadow was being taught basics of martial arts by Sensei, Proximus defeated a well-known officer of the Legion. Sarge, and a legendary general of the Legion, whom even the strongest heralds feared. There are many characters, who had insane experience and might and still got defeated by Proximus. He also managed to suppress Shadow Mind, a feat which legendary fighters tried to achieve, but all either lost control over themselves or went insane. Again, the only one who could do it was Shadow and him. Developers of the game compared Shang Su with Descendant for a reason. Their so-called rivalry is never a rivalry, but a one-sided stomp. Because of the life lesson it tries to teach you. You can achieve a lot in life with hard work, but someone who works just as hard as you, but also has insane talent as a bonus, will outperform you. But you still have a chance to give the next generation a better future, by improving yourself, like Shadow and Mei did. I might be wrong about this particular subject. So comment down your opinions below. It'd be interesting to hear what you think. Back to the descendant, he also had to restart his life in different conditions three times. So he defeated everyone in different timelines under different conditions for four times in total. This all adds up to insane battle experience. This short story is to give you an idea who Shadow's good descendant is and why is it an honor to face someone like him in the battle. Obviously Proximus's prime strength is when he gets to the realm of infinity, becoming an ancient. What he can do in his prime. His power is insane. Being able to control Shadow Mind. He can create the world again according to his will, he can revive the dead, wipe out entire systems, similar to Titan, however if Titan did it in decades or longer, Proximus can do it in seconds. Even without Shadow Mind, Proximus's strength was enough to put down someone who had Shadow Mind and vast experience using it. Developers really overdid, having given the main character this much power. What the main character of Shadow Fight 3 accomplished really. He defeated the main villain. Stranger who wanted to inherit Titan's will and destroy the life as people knew it. Proximus defeated countless characters on his way to peace, being in three different planes, while being weakened. He also almost never lost a fight. Proximus's durability is insane. He had enough stamina to withstand against Shadow, while the latter was in his robot for two rounds and also could fought furiously when his dad took Shadow Mind. While battling Stranger, Proximus lasted for so many rounds despite not having Shadow Mind. We discussed how he was a gifted genius. How he never gave up and his unmatched strength, so there is really no point in further repeating the same. We had two battles comparing these two characters. The first one, you probably all heard of. 
Nothing really to add to the things I told, Proximus proved himself. The fight was obviously unfair. Shadow was in his robot for two rounds, then Shadow got something that wasn't even his. Shadow Mind made him much stronger, buffed him to a point. He could materialize many weapons he already had from Shadow Fight 2, and make his stamina much higher. The fact that Proximus somehow won this one is unbelievable. The second battle took place in transformation period, where Proximus was significantly weakened due to stability. He won even this time. So between two of these characters, there is an undisputed winner. But could Shadow defeat his evil son? This one might make Shadow's fans quite happy, but before we start, if you don't who is his evil son? Check out this video explaining his origins and his life. It will help you understand him better. Stranger isn't that strong when it comes to combat. He always won by intelligence or just fled the fight when it was necessary. Shadow Mind didn't really belong to him, but he still used it a lot, and most of his strength came from Proximus. Shadow's evil son in his prime was able to wipe out Shadow's existence and make his chance of existence to 0%. However, it was unfair. If Proximus wasn't making Stranger stronger without knowing himself, even having Shadow Mind wouldn't save Stranger. He'd be a weak possibility of existence without Proximus's efforts. And so, Shadow in his base form could clap Stranger like it was a piece of a cake. Stranger in fact admits for a long time, he's no match for Shadow in any condition unless Proximus made him stronger. Let's summarize everything. Shadow is a formidable warrior, who is the strongest in the world, only being inferior to his son. Proximus in his prime is not someone Shadow could defeat no matter what he did, even if the fight was unfair for Shadow's favor. Even Proximus in his weakest adult form was able to defeat Shadow. The only way Shadow could win is if he was fighting teenager Proximus where the latter doesn't have Shadow Mind. When it comes to Stranger, 99% of the time Shadow proves who is the dad here. The era when Stranger was boosted by Proximus to the extent of him being able to defeat Shadow didn't last very long. It was a short glimpse of history. Stranger getting Shadow Mind is also questionable and debatable. Which is why, Shadow takes this win. This video was based on what we know about the story of Shadow Fight. If you have your own opinion, don't hesitate to comment it down below. Also tell in the comments who is your favorite character among these three.